Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. And the message of Easter morning is the Lord is risen. Jesus is alive. And that's what makes Easter such an amazing time because we are talking about somebody who can give real hope in a world which is empty of hope. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at Easter in different ways. And we're going to start off with a, a hymn by Stuart Town and see what a morning gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. If you're not familiar with this one, just listen to it. It's an easy tune. Please join in if you can. Okay, let's join together. Stand or sit, whichever you're most comfortable with. Please be seated. Shall we just bow together and speak to God in prayer? Father, we thank you for that wonderful message that was given that morning to the women at the tomb. He is not here. He is risen, as he said. And Father, thank you because Christ is risen. We can have hope in this life. We can have hope for eternity. And Father, we pray on this Easter morning that we might all grasp this wonderful, amazing message of a living Saviour. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together like this to share this time, to celebrate Easter, to remember what it means. And Lord, we pray that you would just move amongst us and speak to us. Help us, Father, just to grasp the wonder of this message. Thank you, Lord, for all those here this morning. Pray that you would bless each home, each family, each individual. May they know your joy and your peace in their lives. We do remember those not with us, familiar faces who can't be here because of illness or because they're away on traveling. Lord, be with each one, we pray. May they know your presence and your help in their lives. So, Father, be with us now, we pray, 
as we ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory. Amen. Now, um, I think it's time for us to meet my little friend, don't you? Yeah. And yours. You've got a friend as well. Let me get my friend. Right. Okay. <laughs> Alfie, you shouldn't be sleeping now. It's time to wake up. What do you mean, where do all these people come from? You weren't expecting all these. Oh, <laughs> ah, right. What? You've just seen Albert. Okay. Hi, Albert. He wants to say hello. Hi. Oh, who, what's his name? Jojo. Jojo. Oh, right. <laughs> Is he friendly? Yeah. He's oh, friendly. good. Thank you, Albert. Go and sit down over there because, um, Al Alfie, I don't know if you've forgotten, but today's Easter. Yes, it's here. Has he been? Has who been? Easter Bunny. Your mind's on chocolate again, isn't it? Yeah, I know. And I promised you that come Easter, I would give you a present. Yes, I have got it with me. Yeah, it is to do with Easter. Yes, you can eat it. What shape is it? Well, it's sort of a roundish sort of shape. Okay, would you like to see it? Can you eat it now? Well, we'll see. Tell you what, let's bring my bag over here. Let's just put it down there. And... Here it is. <laughs> oh. I don't think he's impressed. Don't you like hot cross buns? They're disgusting. Oh. Thank you for that. But hot, cr hot cross buns are great. You can slice them and butter them and toast them and put jam on them. And can you put chocolate spread on them? No, I don't think so. But um, you don't like hot rust corn, but, but they're special. Can, can you see why they're special? It's got a kiss on it. Well, I suppose it has got a kiss on it, really. But no, that's a cross. That's why we call them hot cross buns. You thought it meant that they were angry. No, not that sort of cross. <laughs> no, actually, you say it's got a kiss, but a cross reminds us that Jesus at Easter time died upon a cross, and that's what they're all about. You'd rather think of it as a kiss. Well, that's not a bad idea, actually, a because... A kiss from God. Why, a kiss from God, yes. <laughs> when, when do you put kisses on a letter or a card? What are you saying at when you put a quip at the end? What do you put it there for? Love. Love, yeah. It says, I love you. And actually, the hot cross bun reminds us that God loves us. And that's what Easter is all about. That God loved us and sent his son into the world. So you don't like my present for you? <laughs> oh dear. Well, it's just as well I've got you another one. Ah, uh, here we are. How is that? Is that better? You were expecting something a bit bigger. It's not pleasing you at the moment, is there? Okay, shall I have these then? You want a bigger one? Okay, Alfie. How about that? Oh, oh, all right, all right. Oh, see, I'm going to put that back down there. Ah, you like that? No, you can't eat it now. You'll have to wait till later. You've got a question. Okay, what's the question? Why do we use eggs for Easter? It's a good question. Why do you think we use eggs for Easter? Albert? Maybe because they're a bit like the hatch of life. Exactly. <laughs> Living things come out of eggs, real eggs, not chocolate eggs. Chickens, geese, ducks, even snakes. They all come out of eggs. And eggs speak about new life. 
And of course, that's what Easter is all about. It's new life. It's something that's new and real and exciting. Actually, there's a bit more to eggs than that, as we'll see a bit later. No, you don't have to hang around. You can go back to sleep if you like. But um, we're going to leave it there for now, and we're going to come back to the eggs in a little bit, okay? No, you have to wait to eat your egg. So let's put you back here, shall we? There, you go down there. Try and behave. Ah, oh, dear me, let's put that up there. Get organised. Uh, I think we're going to have a song. Uh, if you've been to Easter Cracked, you will know this song. And I know Ira's been, Albert's been, I don't know if anybody else has been. So if you don't know this song, just listen along and join in. Um, Albert, would you like come and help me with this, with the actions? You can bring, you can bring, what's his name again? Jojo. Jojo, you can bring Jojo. And Ira, would you like to come and do the actions with me? Fantastic. I don't know if, um, where's Mary gone? We've lost Mary. If anybody, any of the other children like to come and help, they can, but if you're a bit shy, well done, Mary. Okay, the song is, uh, sing a song, sing a joyful song, you know that one. Yes. Right, are we ready? Okay, here we go. Right, if you know the song, sing along. If you want to do the actions, join in. Here we go. Sing a song, sing a joyful song, sing a joyful song to celebrate. Sing a song, sing a joyful song. Okay, here we go. Jesus is alive, you know. going to go on an egg hunt. Now we're not going to go around here and find lots of lovely chocolate eggs because these yeah. eggs are a bit boring. They're all plastic. Well, what's inside is quite exciting. Now what you've got to do, as you know, is you close your eyes, put your hand in, and you've got to pull an egg out and you're looking for the egg of the right colour. Like yellow. Well, not yet, because the first egg is Green. green. Who's going to go first? I oh, thought it might be Albert. <laughs> no peeping. Nope. 
Blue. No, don't, don't, don't put it back in. <laughs> Where's that going? There, take the blue one out. Are you going to help me as well? Fantastic. White. Oh, yellow. One more left. There's two left. Pink. <laughs> it's got to be this one. Right, okay. Turn around. Open it up and tell us what's inside there. I put some money. Some money. How much money is that? This is... The That's 10 pence. And this is 20. That's 20 30. pence. That's 30 pence. Now, somewhere in the Easter story, there's something about somebody selling something for I money. Know. I know. Do you know? Yeah. Let me ask Ira. Um, Judas is selling trusted Jesus to sold for some people for 30 silver. 30 pieces of silver. Yeah, Judas sold his best friend Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. What a horrible thing to do. Thank you, Albert. Right, go around the back now and we'll move on to the next one because the next one is blue. Do you think you can beat five? I think so. You think so? Confidence. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Green. Green. No, that's the last one. White. <laughs> Two. We couldn't be here all day, folks. Which one? Both. Yeah! Oh, that's cheating. Ira Lewis. Nearly, nearly. Ira Lewis. I got one. Oh. I beat five. Right, come on then. Let's see. Don't, don't break it. Turn it. Oh dear. <laughs> People you have to work with sometimes. Oh, careful. Watch your fingers on that. Yeah, yeah, I will. Ow, 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 what's that? A thorn. Can you see the thorns? A thorn. A thorn. I touched. Do we get to keep what's in there? No, you don't get to keep. You don't want to take it. Thank you. Where do we find thorns in the Bible, in the story of... Do you know? Jesus died. Yes, what did they do? Born crowned. He formed thorns inside. That was nails, wasn't it? What they put in his head? Thorns. He put thorns and a crown on his head. Do you know, I was doing some gardening the other day and I got one of those thorns in my thumb and it really, really hurt. You think what it would be like to have thorns in your head? And that's what Jesus had. I right. I had a bomb in my head. Did you? Pink We're looking for the pink egg, okay? Here we go. We're going to count our last one as five because I retreated. No. Yes. Right. Let's see. Pink, 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 pink. Oh, green. 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 Pink, 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 pink. Yes! Right, what's in here? No, don't squash it. Just turn it. Oh, that's it. The other way. That's it. Right. Yeah, give me that. Turn around and show everybody what this is. What is it? It's a cross. It's a cross. And I know what the cross counts for when he died. Thank you, Albert. Let, let some of these older ones have a go, okay? Because they know a bit of the story as well. The cross, as Albert said, is what Jesus died upon. And it was the most horrible way of dying. Thank you very much. That was really good. Right. Put that back in there. Right. Mary, you've got to find the yellow egg. Here we go. First time! Oh! Yeah. Professional! Right, Mary, what's in this? Uh, oh! Bandage! Oh! Uh, what's that? It's a bandage or a cloth. It's a long strip of cloth. Where does that come in the story, Ira? When they uh, wrapped Jesus in a cloth and his They did. They wrapped Jesus up in a cloth and put him in a big rock and tomb. That's the start. Yeah, back to the start again. Well, does anybody else like to try and find the last egg, which this time is white? White, any volunteers? Oh, we've got four here, so it's all right. <laughs> okay. If you don't get it, the next person has a try, right? Christine can do it. See if Christine can do it. Christine, you'll be volunteer. White. Or white. No one can be. Like white. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't feel like white. Oh dear. 
What's in this one is the best secret of all, isn't it, Albert? Do you know what it is? Don't say Do you know what it is? It is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and that is the great story of Easter because when they rolled back the stone of the tomb, nothing was there was that. nobody in there. Jesus was alive. And that is why the Easter story is such an amazing story because it's a story which has got the best happy ending of all. <laughs> And one that gives us hope. We finished now. We're all done. Yeah. Ah, she wants to do it again. <laughs> right. Thank you. Go and sit down. Thank you. <coughs> right. We're just going to watch a little story. Thank you very much. We're going to watch a story on the screen all about Easter. Boys and girls, I want you to watch very carefully because when you go out the back, you'll be doing something to do with the story that you've got to remember, okay? So, watch the, the screen, here we go. Two people, moving and marching, thinking, head scratching, about something big that's just been happening. But on the road to Emmaus from Jerusalem Way, two became three as another says, hey, Hey, says he, you've been thinking and head scratching. Has something big just been happening? <gasps> you've not heard about what's been happening? All of Jerusalem have been head scratching. What have I missed? Asks the man. I'd love to know. Please tell if you can. It's about a man called Jesus. And we thought he was coming to rescue God's people and send the Romans off running. He did and he said loads of cool stuff from a place up north called Nazareth. He told great stories and healed the sick. He knew people by name and what made them tick. Oh, remember that wedding? He turned water to wine. Brought his friend back to life and his friend felt just fine. He was sharing and caring, just ask his friend Pete. He walked on the water with only his feet. He said shush to the storm and the storm was hushed. He did a miracle with bread and thousands were stuffed. Besides all this, his sermon up a hill had so many stories, super cool and brill. I can't believe it. What a big loss. A man so great who hung on a cross and on that cross, that's where he died. I feel so tied up in knots inside. And three days have passed, though it feels more like seventy, cause now we've heard that his tomb is empty. That's right, you heard me, his body is gone. But who'd take his body? He never did wrong. You seem confused and out of the picture. So let me show you what it says in the scripture. It was always the plan, right from the start, because Jesus loves you with all of his heart. He died on the cross, but rose from the tomb. He came back to life so you can live too. And as they were moving, and still head scratching, two of them stopped, but the third kept on marching. Uh, hey, uh, don't go, please, the two say. The sun's gone to bed, so why don't you stay? Good point, says the third. Day has turned to night. I'll stop over with you two and then grab a bite. And as they sit down to eat, they close their eyes. He thanks God for the grub, then what a surprise! The two people stare and then rub their eyes. It's Jesus, not gone, but fully alive! And before they say seconds, there's more bread going round. Jesus just vanishes. He cannot be found. The two are left thinking, I'm really head scratching. They'd just been with Jesus. Something big was happening. We must say we've seen Jesus, so tie up your shoes. Quick, to Jerusalem, there's no time to lose. All along it was Jesus, the very same one. They were searching the scriptures with God's precious son. 
It's the biggest story that's ever been told. About Jesus who's risen and never gets old. The two met with Jesus in the most surprising way. They shared the story and we still share it today. Right, we're just going to have uh, one final song before any of the children who want to go out can go out. Um, right, here we are. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. Let's sing this together. about three years ago um, I was told by somebody sitting here that one of the best ways to keep your mind active is either learn a musical instrument or learn a language didn't you Dean <laughs> so I thought I'd learn a new language new to me I started learning Welsh and just this week I'm still doing it just this week I had a new phrase a new construction it was this Poisi thar bai. If you don't speak Welsh, it means who's to blame. Literally, which is the one that the blame is on. That's how it translates. Who's to blame? You know, that's the, wo the words on people's lips so often. If something goes wrong, who's to blame? If something happens in a hospital that shouldn't have happened, who's to blame? If something happens on a road accident, who's to blame? I suppose we get the same sort of thing on television, don't we? In the whodunits. I don't know if you like whodunits. I do. I love a good whodunit. I, I got 
uh, hooked many years back when I was quite young by G.K. Chesterton, who wrote the Father Brown stories. This was before Mark Williams became the famous detective sleuth. And he was um, a very keen detective finding out who was responsible. Of course, there are others. as people like Hercule Poirot, um, Sherlock Holmes, and many others besides. But all of them are looking for the same answer. Who was responsible? Who did it? Who is to blame? As I was thinking about those, and I was, I was watching a Father Brown this week on the telly, um, it struck me we could ask the same question about Easter, the death of Jesus. Who's to blame? Who done it? Who's responsible? There's no shortage of suspects. You know, if we were to go through the story as it's found in the Bible, there are lots of people surrounding this story, which is one of intrigue and plotting and planning and deception. I suppose you would start off with Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' closest friends, who, as we found out with the, the plastic eggs, betrayed his friend for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. Judas certainly is on the list of people responsible for the death of Jesus. As we read through the story, there'd be the Jewish rulers, the Pharisees, scribes, priests, Sadducees, all these men who had power and wanted to hold on to it. And as somebody said, where there is power, there is corruption. And there certainly was there. Here were men who were violently opposed to Jesus. And the one thing they wanted was to get him killed. Because he didn't fit in with their pattern. They didn't, he didn't slot into their religious ideas. Then, of course, I suppose you would put the Romans there somewhere in the scene as well. After all, crucifixion was a Roman punishment and a very cruel one at that. And crucifixions weren't rare in the land of Israel. If somebody offended the Romans, they'd be nailed to a cross. People knew you don't mess with the Romans. And certainly these were the ones who had the power, the authority to put people to death. Of course, behind the Romans, there was Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, the man who had the authority to say, live or die. The strange thing about Pilate is this man who upheld Roman law and Roman justice had three times said, I find this man innocent. Now, if a judge in our British course of law said publicly, this man is innocent, who would disagree? But people didn't like it. So I suppose the last people we have in this list of suspects would be the crowd. Popular pressure. How powerful that is. We see it all the time, don't we? That's what politicians bow to. If the people like it, it's okay. If the people don't like it, we won't go near it. And the crowd certainly had the power this day. As Pilate says, I'm going to release this man. The priest stirred up the crowd and the shout was, crucify him, crucify him. Our only king is Caesar. And Jesus was crucified. Who's to blame? Who's responsible? Who done it? Just go to what side for a moment. There's um, another who done it that I particularly like on TV. It's gone through various series. It's Death in Paradise. I don't know if anybody watches it. But it's got a pattern to it, and it has since the days, right at the beginning when Ben Miller was the, the detective. 
And what happens with this is that the detective, this one's Adlo Hanlon is in this series, um, he'll get all the clues and all the clues are pointing towards one person, but you know it's not going to be that person. It's going to be the person that you least suspect and it's usually upon a tiny little shred of evidence that the detective builds up the answer to it all. And as he assembles all the suspects there, very dramatically, he points out the guilty person. And it's the last person you suspect. I have a little game on that, actually. I, I look for the least likely person. I say, that's the one it's going to be. And it very often is. So, applying that to our Easter story, and if we go back to all these people that we've looked at, which is the one you would least suspect? The one you would lay the least blame at? And the answer is none of them. You see, using death in paradise um, ideas, the least person you would suspect of all is the mighty God. God the Father. Peter, as he stood up on the day of Pentecost and he spoke to the crowds, he said these words. Let me just read them to you, then I'll put them in easier language. Speaking to the people of Jerusalem, he said, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death whom God raised up. Now that sounds as though Peter is accusing the people for it all. Let's put that middle phrase into a, a newer translation. This is the New Living Translation, and this is what it says. But God knew what would happen, and his prearranged plan was carried out when Jesus was betrayed. He got that. It was God's plan. Jesus' death was what God wanted. That's hard to understand, isn't it? That's hard to come to terms with that a loving father wanted his own beloved son hung upon a Roman cross. But that's what it was. You know, if again, if you read the story in the Gospels, you'd find one place where Jesus is there in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he knows what's coming. He's been telling his followers for a year previous that he's going to go to Jerusalem to be crucified. And his friends can't understand it. And he's there praying to God in the Garden. And he says, if it's possible, don't let this happen. But not what I want, but what you want. Now the big question is, if God did plan Jesus' death, why? Well, the answer is found at Calvary. For as Jesus hung there upon the cross, he hung in the most awful pain and shame. God took all the filth of this world, all its crime, all its hatred, its anger, its selfishness, its greed, its pride and cruelty, and punished Jesus for it. Jesus bore our punishment, and he died. And they put him in a tomb and they rolled a stone in front of it and sealed it with the Roman seal. To break that seal meant death. And mankind was saying, that's the last we'll see of him, he's finished. But today's Easter. And on Easter Sunday, Jesus rose. That's why we've got the empty tomb. You see, God allowed his son to die. God allowed him to take our punishment. God allowed him to bear our penalty. But Jesus knew he was going to take his life again. 
And the glorious message of the Christian faith is that Jesus is alive. And more than that, he reaches out to us in love. Yes, the kiss on the hot cross bun, it's just that. God loves us. God sent his son to die for us. And because Jesus died, God offers us his forgiveness for all we've done wrong. He say, I'm not a bad person. And you know, that's what I thought about myself. I thought I was good when I was growing up. And I, I was compared to many others. But I wasn't good enough for God. There was pride in here and anger and jealousy and malice. And there were things that just kept me away from God. And Jesus stepped in. He said, I'll forgive you all those things if you allow me to. And as a young lad, just going into my teens, I accepted Christ as my saviour. I received him into my life and made him my own. And Jesus became real on that day. And that's the message of Easter. Jesus can be real to you. But you've got to let him in. The Bible tells us God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's God's part. But the, other, the rest of the verse is about our part, that whosoever believes on him, oh, you've got to trust him. You've got to receive him. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that's the Easter message. To pray that this Easter you might come to know Jesus in that special way. To begin a relationship with him. To make him your own. Thank you for listening. We're going to draw it to close with a, a hymn on the screen. You may not know it. Just listen to it. It says, I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. Let's just enjoy this and then we'll close in prayer and we'll get the kids back in. Thank you. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus
Father, as we come to the close of our service together, we pray that the joy of Easter might, might reign in our hearts, that the, the peace of the risen Christ may guide us in our lives, that the hope of his triumph might galvanise us, and that the love of the Lord Jesus Christ may control us. Bless us, Father, as we go our separate ways. Be with us for the days ahead. We ask your parting blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>